standard metagame. So, um, you know, it's the most popular deck that we have here. And on the other side, Drew Baker. <laughs> Drew Baker. Drew Baker. As much as I appreciate Ely Cassis and appreciate the fact that he's a great Magic player and I want to see him play, I wanted to see Drew Baker's deck in action. That's right. So he's got Bant Tokens here, Paul, which, to my knowledge, isn't a deck. It is not. Can confirm. Okay. I have not run into this deck at all. But hey, I can see the idea behind why you would like to try this deck. I right? love it. I absolutely love it that Drew sleeved this thing up. And you know, it is crazy because sometimes you can hit a metagame right, and boom, you can run away with it. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen here for Drew, but I certainly respect it. Yeah. What You know, w one, one thing that I can understand is, look, there was a recent banning. Right? And the card that was banned was Meat Hook Massacre. Right. Fantastic card against these go wide token strategies. That's no longer a card that people play. A lot of these decks are prepared to play a bunch of one for one removal spells to kill Rafines, kill some of those key cards. So, you know, by going wide, perhaps Drew can, that's kind of what Drew was going for. Right? I'm going to join the dance. I'm going to play some King Darians. I'm going to play some Broker's Ascendancy. I mean, these are some great limited cards. Drew Baker, by the way, a limited specialist, right? Absolutely. So he's like, you know, these cards all have won me a lot of games in the past. So maybe I'll just try it here in standard. And look, not doing too bad. You know who's really good in limited? Broker's Ascendancy. <laughs> <laughs> all the anthems. A little bit of a different strategy here for Ely Cassis. He's taking the best cards in standard and playing those ones. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Drew does not have any removal spells for this Shieldred. Also, a good, also great limited card. Yes, the best one, in fact, in the format. Right, right. So, I mean, no way to really push through damage here, just more ways to make tokens. Now, those wedding announcements will be flipping fairly soon, mm -hmm. right? So, again, Drew going to have a lot of power in play here. Look at this. We're looking at 14 power on the battlefield. Wow. And then there's another wedding announcement that's going to become a festivities coming up pretty soon too, Paul. The question is, can he hang in there long enough to actually leverage all of these I creatures? I mean, he could. Look, we're going to put four more power into play here. I mean, he's doing the thing. He is doing the thing. And remember, he's also got that make disappear which can counter this Wandering Emperor if Ely tries to go for that. I wonder if Drew just goes, you know what? I'm going to get in with everything. Yeah, I think it's about time to just start turning things sideways. It's not getting any better from here. This could get in for 14 damage. However, Ely can attack back here for lethal. Yes. Right? Yes. There's a Join the Dance and Wandering Emperor. And you won't get a token here no, to block. No, it's hard, yeah. Um, Drew does have the Wandering Emperor with Make Disappear, right? So Drew Baker has the ability to do both. So if Ely chooses to attack, Drew can exile the Shieldred. Which actually is what he needs to happen. Now, what if Ely just goes for AO? If he just goes for AO, okay, then he didn't. Okay, well, he didn't. Okay. All right, so it's Wandering Emperor time. <laughs> Ely, Ely can then try to counter it with Urtai, but is one mana short from being able to pay for a make disappear that's been copied. And Drew should have an easy time of cleaning, of winning the game if he can survive, right? He's got oh, seven man. three threes right just, now. Is this just enough? Right? Is because Drew you're, doing because it? You're going to gain the life here. So you're going to go up to, you're going to go, to, go down to one, then go up to three. Yeah. And then you take one from the shield wow. trigger, you go down to one. You take two and go to one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Is this for real right now? Oh, however, uh, excuse me, sorry. Ely does have multiple copies of the plaza. Ah. I'm, I'm just getting so excited watching Drew's well, deck in action here. So can, then can he instead make a... No, he would die. No, he, uh, Ely just gives this hexproof, I believe. I was wondering if he could make a 2-2 two, two and block, but he would take 5 and then 2 from Shieldred. Right. So that wouldn't work. But it would play around the plaza. Right. So instead he just dies? So perhaps this was a... Little ambitious? Little aggressive. Maybe one of the 
maybe Creatures keep one needed back. to stay home. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's it a tough one. It was on the board, right? There it was literally on the play. There was an on-the-board trick. Yeah. That was a little bit tough, but I like it. Drew Baker, right-click, attack all. YOLO, hey. let's see what happens. But uh, that is game number one going to Ely Cassis. Yeah, I think, I think Drew was probably thinking about all the different spells that Ely could have there and perhaps missed the fact that the Plaza of Heroes can just give Hexproof, uh, and it's not just indestructible right. to your legendary creatures. Boy, that Plaza's been doing overtime. I think that's going to be one of the most important cards of the tournament, given, the, given how much we've seen um, Esper midrange and how right. important it is in that deck. And by the way, Ely's deck. Now, many of the other Esper decks play nearly no sweepers in their sideboard. Ely's deck, however, has two copies of Depopulate and two copies of Farewell. Mm. So he's a little bit more prepared for potential aggressive decks. Now, Farewell, it is kind of tough to resolve because Drew Baker's not playing your traditional mono red, mono white deck. Drew actually has blue in his deck for counter magic. So uh, trying to get, find a way to get a six mana spell to resolve might not be so easy here. It's just difficult, right? Because when you're trying to be super proactive but also play counter spells, you're, act, you're asking your list to give you some pretty balanced draws where you have like just enough tokens plus pump to a, a pressure your opponent's life total and force them to need to do something like that while you also have the counter spell. It's like, it's yeah, pretty tough. It is rough. That's why you just can't overload your deck with sideboards. Mm -hmm. But if you just have a bunch of threats, and you, and the thing is, you only really need kind of that one timely counter spell. It's true. Because these decks rely so heavily on just being able to resolve that wrath or, or various sweepers to kind of come back in these games. Yeah, and if Ely ha has access to it, he will craft his game plan around it. Though looking at his opening hand, that's not the case just yet. Okay, wedding announcement's going to hit the battlefield here for Drew, but uh, yeah, this is uh, the dream curve here for Eli Look at Cassis. this, the classic two, three, four, right? Nasty. Two drop Rafine into Shieldred against an aggressive deck. This is really nasty stuff here from Eli Cassis. This is really showing the raw power of Esper midrange. This is why you play this deck, sure. In this tournament, they're going to be playing against each other quite a bit, but if you play against a deck that can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it, this is what it looks like. And he's just going to get absolutely ran over by this curve. Now, Drew does have the option. Drew does have a protect the negotiators yep. in hand, right? He, he can so leave you, that. He can go join the dance and keep up counter magic or play Adeline. Now, if you play the Adeline, don't have counter spell, right? You don't have counter magic available here. So you get really punished by a shieldred. Yep. There's a void rend, which can answer the Adeline as well. Tough spot here for Drew. Drew's hanging in there at three okay. and three. Okay, so this tells me that Ely might not care too much about his life total, right? Because, of course, if you play the shield, you gain some life and would rather look to see what he draws off the Rafine before deciding what to do. For example, if you found a Destroy Evil, and you have Destroy Evil plus Negate up. Sure. Ouch, ouch. Down to 12, and there's Shieldred the Apocalypse as the follow-up. Scary life totals already. Down to Ooh, 10 is going to go Good draw Drew. here from hey, Drew. there's a Destroy Evil. That's a Destroy Evil, and has the ability to play Protect the Negotiators with Kicker. Very nice. If he wants, and now he gets to get in for 7 damage. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and the wedding announcement's going to flip. But Ely is at a nice 17 life here. Yeah, it is falling quickly, though. There's a redundant Rafine off the top. Right, and maybe this, nope, still not going to go for the Shieldred here. Just going to attack. And... Make a giant lifelinker. I mean, this Denik, what are we looking at here? A, a six, seven with lifelink? Could be. And on. potentially indestructible? Yeah, this one's a five, six, because okay. he discarded a non-land, but ouch, down to four is Drew Baker. And I wonder if Ely is going to choose to pass here, right? Because Drew really, I mean, this really, it really smells like Drew has a counter spell there. Yeah. So really heads up play there, Ely just passing and G giving himself the option of either casting Void Rend or the Wandering Emperor this turn instead. Yeah, that's tough for Drew. 
He had the wedding announcement in his hand. Decided to keep up the counter spell. Here comes Void Rend. Can't counter that. Now, is he going to pump the brakes even slightly here? Yes. A little bit here. Tiny bit. And he can join plus brokers. He can, he can join plus brokers. Now, there is a wandering Emperor in Ely's hand, right? Mm -hmm. So, if Ely finds another non creature, uh, another non land spell, you can go wandering Emperor, put a counter on your Rafine, and then attack for four, and that should be lethal. Yep, you're right. And there's a depopulate. Yep, as well as AO are going to hit the bin. That's going to make Rafine three, and one more counter from the counter from the uh, Wandering Emperor is enough for a combat trick lethal through an un uh, tapped out Drew Baker, and that's going to be Ely Cassis picking up the victory here in two decisive games over Drew, and you do get a chance to see some of the upside to what Drew brought. I mean, he was able to do the thing.